Hey everyone, welcome to Thinking West Great Books Explored, where we talk all things related to the great books, from reflections on particular works to the big questions surrounding a classical education and its impact on society. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and like if that's uh, something that's going to interest you in the future, and also to promote uh, this slightly more elevated content over the typical cat videos and political rants that uh, pervade most of the internet today. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about what five books are absolutely indispensable to a classical education. So, if you were to cut all books except five from a, say, classical education program, which five would you leave in the end? And here are my picks, and I'll be glad to hear all of your picks down in the comments below. So some of the criteria that I'm going to be using in picking these five books is that they're going to have to be spread out both in time, so they can't all be bunched up in the same time period, and they're going to have to cover slightly different subject matters. So I want to hit both philosophy and history, for example, and, and some of the other areas that we'll get to as well. So here they are, the five books that are essential for a classical education. Number one on that list is Aristotle's Ethics. This will cover the area of general philosophy. And to not include Aristotle's Ethics would be a capital sin in itself. And in this work, Aristotle wrestles with uh, what the highest aim of man really is and how that aim affects how we live. So Aristotle is arguably one of the most important uh, teachers in the ancient Greek world, as he is um, and arguably one of the greatest minds of, of all time. He's a worthy successor to Plato's teaching, a prolific author in and of himself, and the educator of Alexander the Great. It's a tough resume to beat. Also, more than any other individual, Aristotle is a cornerstone of Western philosophy. As Bertrand Russell suggested, saying, quote, Almost every serious intellectual advance has had to begin with an attack on some Aristotelian doctrine. End quote. And just to give you a little flavor of uh, what the work is and, and how it reads, I'd like to throw in a quote with each of these on the list. Here, so here's a quote from Aristotle's Ethics. Quote, One swallow does not make a summer, neither does one fine day. Similarly, one day or brief time of happiness does not make a person entirely happy. End quote. All right, number two on the list is Plutarch's Lives, and this is going to satisfy the area of history. Now, as my favorite work on this list, Plutarch's Lives of the Noble Grecians and Romans, sometimes just called Lives for short, was sure to make this cut. And Plutarch introduces the reader to history in a very different way than, say, the modern textbook. Rather than running through a series of events in a linear textbook fashion, he emphasized a method of teaching that focused on the people of history and their stories. Now, Plutarch wrote, quote, The world of man is best captured through the lives of the men who created history. End quote. History is a story of people, not stale events with dates tacked on top of them. So Plutarch Lives covers many of the most important people of uh, the early ancient Rome and, and Greece in wonderful detail and color. Now, while not all the facts of this nearly 2,000-year-old uh, history might stand up to modern scrutiny, he does provide great insight into the character, cultures, and the deeds of 48 men in his work that shaped his world and, hence, our world. The work is also written in an interesting style, with uh, pairs of such figures compared and contrasted to highlight moral lessons to be learned from them. Finally, here's a quote from Plutarch's Lives, quote, for kings indeed we have, who wear the marks and assume the titles of royalty. But as for the qualities of their mind, they have nothing by which they are to be distinguished from their subjects. End quote. All right, moving on. Number three on the list is St. Augustine's Confessions. Now, this will satisfy the area of religion or theology, but it also simultaneously uh, serves as the sole autobiography on the list. Perhaps the very first autobiography, Augustine's Confessions, remains a staple of both classical and Christian reading lists. Now, Confessions is an interesting work because it simultaneously gives a personal testimony of Augustine's conversion to the Christian faith, while also illuminating a lot of the theology that um, many Christians still believe today. So it's greatly influenced our modern world. I think that's all there is to say about St. Augustine's Confession, as everyone here listening should absolutely go read it. But for a quote, he writes... Quote, and men go abroad to admire the heights of mountains, the mighty waves of the sea, the broad tides of rivers, the compass of the ocean, and the circuits of the stars, yet pass over the mystery of themselves without a thought. End quote. 
Number four on my list is Montaigne's Essays. Now this one's a little bit different because Montaigne's Essays really satisfies a little bit of everything. It's got uh, his thoughts on politics, on ethics, and a whole bunch of other topics all mixed together. It's basically every thought he ever had put on page, and much of it is genius. The famous Essays is by Michel Equiem du Montaigne, known often just as Lord Maintain most of the time. Now, some of his strange work has doesn't focus on any one topic other than whatever Lord Montaigne decided to write about uh, at the time. Nonetheless, there's a tremendous breadth and clarity of thought and development of ideas uh, on each and every subject that Montaigne put to pen. Now, the work has influenced countless writers and thinkers since the 16th century. In fact, one of the minds behind the great books of the Western world set, Mortimer Adler, called uh, Montaigne's essays his number one choice for books if you're stranded on an island. Now for a quote from Montaigne, he writes, quote, on the highest throne in the world, we still sit only on our bottom, end quote. That's another thing about Montaigne. He had a great wit in his writing. Now last but certainly not least is number five with Don Quixote by Cervantes. Considered by many as the first modern novel, Don Quixote really explores the ideas of heroism, imagination, delusion, and chivalry in a comedic but uh, very entertaining fashion. It's also quite long-winded. Now, Cervantes may be one of the best prose writers ever to put pen to paper. Um, and even though the translations that I read, at least, are in English, um, coming from original Spanish, his mastery over language is still evident. Now, Don Quixote's influenced society ever since his writing over 400 years ago, and it continues to influence our world today. Examples include modern films like Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Furthermore, our English language has even been affected by its writing um, with the words such as quixotic, which means foolishly impractical, especially in the pursuit of ideals, which is what the book's really all about. And this is a testament to its lasting significance today. And last, we can't leave off with the quote for Don Quixote, so here it is. Quote, When life itself seems lunatic, who knows where madness lies? Perhaps to be too practical is madness. To surrender dreams, this may be madness. Too much sanity may be madness. And maddest of all, to see life as it is and not as it should be. End quote. So there you have it, five essential works to read for a classical education, and I don't think they're possible to get rid of if you only had to pare down your entire education to five books. Nonetheless, these picks highlight diverse categories, including philosophy, history, religion, and fiction. So thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe to lift us in the YouTube algorithm, which seems to prefer cat videos and political rants to uh, more important things, like the great books. The dream is simply to be cat videos. Also, leave us a comment on what your five picks might be, or where you agree or disagree on this list. Thanks for watching. Until next time, read on.